Well, hey, it's Matt Steen, co-founder of Chemistry Staffing. And today, this is you know, having a chemistry conversation with Tiffany Henning. Tiffany leads HR Ministry Solutions, which is great ministry helping churches figure out their HR stuff. So, Tiffany, thanks for taking some time to talk. <laughs> Absolutely. I like how you say stuff because that's really yeah. what it is. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And 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 most of us church people, we have no idea what HR stuff is, but no. that's why we're grateful that we've got people like you just to say, hey, <laughs> Tiffany, come rescue us, right? That's so funny. I say it's like Legos. You don't see it's there until you step on it and then it's really painful. So <laughs> that's that's so accurate. That is so accurate. Yeah, all so, the parents out there are like, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Best, best description ever. So well, okay, so so let's let's dive in. So you, I mean, you're working with churches all over the country, helping them figure out their HR stuff. What um, what are you learning about the church right now? What what are you, what are you learning about in this season? Yeah, that's a really good question. It's been really interesting to see how things have shifted. Like last year, people are just, they were scrambling. They were treading water. They were, you know, trying to figure out how to keep things together. And so what we've really seen in the last couple of months as we hit 2021 is that most churches have stepped back at this point and realized, okay, hey, this is not a short-term thing. This is a long-term thing. And not only is it a long-term thing, but um, there's pieces of this that are basically future forward. The way we do the big C church is now changing in a lot of ways. So it's really interesting. A lot of them are restructuring. They're taking this time to really just step back. We're in a new year now. We need to restructure, you know, sometimes having as many kids, uh, ministry staff as we did, it, it's a new world. And so we're going to have to shift the way we do things. So they're really kind of going back to the drawing board with their staff. They're restructuring it which unfortunately sometimes means laying off certain people. Um, it also means hiring different positions, you know, a lot of the more creative type positions, the tech positions. Um, and then with that, we see them actually then, okay, now that everyone's been wearing 27 hats this last year, because everyone just jumped in the midst of it and did whatever needed to be done. Now let's redefine roles and let's kind of write our job descriptions now so that we have a solid foundation to start this year with. Wow. That's, um, that's, wow. That, that's a lot, right? I mean, this it is. is so, so much of this. I mean, so much change in this, in this last year, you, you said something that you're starting to see churches that are, that are starting to restructure and reorg. Um, part of that is hiring. Part of that is letting people go. Um, what, here we go. This is, this is some of that painful stepping on the Lego stuff with HR, right? Cause mm -hmm. nobody likes to let people go. No. What, what, what advice do you have for churches that are in that situation? How, how do they lean into that well? You know what? Um, that is a fantastic question. And to be honest, that's part of the heart and passion of what we do um, because it's not easy. And it's especially not easy if someone's been a great person, a great employee, great heart for God, but it's just not working or you just don't have a position anymore for them. So what we really tell churches is two things, um, kind of three, which <laughs> number one is care is key. Like care is totally key. We need to, we need to, what would Jesus do? You know, hate to throw back for the nineties, but it really is. We need to make sure. And I tell churches throw as much money at it as you can. It doesn't mm. stop the hurt, even if you have a totally legit reasons, but at the same time, it's the worry is, am I going to find another job right now in this COVID environment? And right. so we're like, give them money so they could take a step back so they could breathe. I said, even if there was performance issues, you're not just giving money for them. You're getting, giving money for their family or whoever else is dependent on them. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of taking care of them as brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, the other piece is, and the care doesn't stop the moment they stop working for you. Right. You need to be very intentional after the fact to keep them from going sideways. And then the other piece is communication. You have to communicate as soon as you know, you have to communicate well, um, bring them in as part of the conversation as you're determining certain things, because then they can take some ownership of it know what's going on there's no secrets uh right. you know out there right. and they feel like the church is being transparent and being as caring as possible in a difficult situation yeah. so so go back to the piece about uh, about the money right yeah <laughs> and you know one of the things that so many people forget is that pastors aren't necessarily you know eligible for unemployment insurance and 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 so that's something that we need to kind of keep in the back I just spent some time earlier today with somebody who was a COVID casualty and, yeah. and is not with, you know, has no unemployment insurance or anything like that. 
is there a rule of thumb when it comes to how much money you throw at it? I mean, there's, there's all sorts of, you know, legends and urban, you know, myths yeah. about this. What, what do you typically advise a church? Well, okay. So the only type of rule of thumb I've ever heard is like a week for every year they worked for you. Right. Um, I've heard a couple, not a whole lot, a couple organizations that say a month for every year that they work for you. I'm like, mm -hmm. that's kind of a lot. You can give them a whole year. Yeah. My rule of thumb is never, 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 never should it be less than a month never okay. like because it takes them that long to revise their resume like if they were to go get in a job immediately they have to revise right. their resume they have to do the interviewing process and especially if it's a for another church or ministry those are slow processes yeah. it's not like they don't hire the next day yeah. so and then it's going to take even longer for them to start work and then another two to four weeks till they get paid or get insurance so rule of thumb always a month I am a fan of two to three months, yeah. uh, to be honest with you, because I feel like that is reasonably enough time for them to kind of, um, you know, decompress, figure things out, their next steps. Sometimes they make career changes. Yeah. And the other key thing is the insurance. If you if yeah. they're on your health insurance and there's a way to continue them on, that is a big thing, especially if they have a family that they're yeah. kind of have that on. Yeah. And that's almost the thing. Some of the churches that we work with it's say, you know, if you can do 90 days, great. But if you can, if you can hang on to the insurance, if you can do that for six months, that's, yes. that's, that's awesome because, mm -hmm. you know, so much of what we're seeing, you know, I mean, and you've, you've seen this, you know, people can be out for six to 12 months before they get onto staff at that, yes. at that next church. Mm -hmm. And that's, and again, without the unemployment insurance, that's a, that's a yep. long way to go. Yep. And, and so, it take it ten, to your point, it typically takes about 90 days to kind of pick yourself up and say what just happened and, and get ready to dive back in. So let me, <laughs> um, uh, on the same thought, I know we're trying to keep this short, but let me also throw in <laughs> what we really see is that, um, most of the time, a lot of times when they are laying off or restructuring the people who get the short end of the stick, it's not just their position sometimes that there maybe have been a little bit of a performance issue, not maybe mm -hmm. enough for them to fire them just straight out but there's a performance issue. And so that always gets a little messier and there's hurt. Mm -hmm. So I like that extra buffer as well, because I think that person needs to process through everything yeah. and some healing needs to happen before they jump into another ministry job. Otherwise they're oh, just yeah. bringing all their baggage with them. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so as we look to, to the horizon, um, what, what are you seeing that pastors need to be, need to be aware of say for the next 90 days, six months or a year? Um, you know what? Communication is key. That is the, you can do employee surveys to the cows come home and 95% of the time communication is going to be the number one pain point of employees. Okay. So just communicate, communicate, communicate. And then when you think you communicated a ton, communicate twice as much yeah. <laughs> with yeah. everything. And especially if people are not on um, site. So if you've got all these people remote and everything, you need to be extremely intentional on their spiritual walks, on their mental, emotional well-being, on their collaboration, as well as just them feeling connected culture-wise with the organization. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Well, Tiffany, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate this. Tiffany, um, I'm, I'll link off to all of her, all of her stuff down below, but you were telling me that you've got a guide, um, when, when churches are going through some of this restructuring, you've got a guide to help them figure out, okay, so we're, we're going to create a new role. Here's how you put together a job description. Tell me, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. We have a uh, job description guide that really includes some templates and includes some action words, some layouts uh, suggested on how you should do things. Cause a lot of people do job descriptions and they won't put a signature page on it. And I said, mm -hmm. Oh, you have to do signatures. Um, and those things and I know you guys have something similar to um, another resource that we have, which is like a transition staff transitions, you know, when someone's transitioning off, I think you guys have a transition playbook, we have yeah. something similar, um, that really helps churches just with their communication um, in that and help them to kind of do it well. Cool. Very cool. We'll, we'll link off to all that down below. Really, if you're if you've got HR questions, if you if you're struggling with you know an employee handbook, because frankly, you know nobody likes writing those except no. for <laughs> Tiffany. 
Um, no, even I don't like writing them. I always say nobody likes writing them, but I love doing them because it creates a conversation with yeah. a uh, church and it helps them. So yeah, that's awesome. So go, go check her out. We'll link off to that down below. But Tiffany, thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks.